Keyword research is the foundation of SEO and you won't show up on Google without it. The first thing any decent SEO expert will do is pop open their expensive keyword research tools, type in your domain and see which keywords you're ranking for and which ones you're not. They may even do a gap analysis or analyze your competitors or simply guess which keywords they think you should rank for. This stuff isn't hard to do, but you need access to expensive keyword research tools to do it. The one I use clocks in at $139 a month while the cheapest option I found comes to $29 a month. I actually did a shootout comparing some of the most popular research tools which you can watch here. And let's face the facts, most small business owners have very limited budgets. Even 29 bucks a month might break the bank. And I get it, I've been there. You don't wanna spend money without knowing if you'll ever see results. And plus, you're probably already paying for other subscription services like ChatGPT, Canva, website hosting, and maybe even some plugins or video editing software. Shit adds up. I'm constantly looking for better and cheaper ways to do SEO so that more small business owners can take advantage of the free traffic that Google has to offer. So can you use ChatGPT to do keyword research and avoid paying for yet another subscription? One important thing that I need to mention is that ChatGPT does not have access to search volume and other metrics the way keyword research tools like Google Keyword Planner, SEMrush, or Ahrefs do. So if we're using ChatGPT to do keyword research, we're likely gonna be flying blind, meaning we won't know if the keywords it's giving us are good or if it's just guessing, but that's not gonna stop us from testing it. In this video, I'll be comparing the results ChatGPT gives us with the data from SEMrush. But before we do that, hit that subscribe button. So one of the biggest mistakes I see when people do SEO is that they're targeting the wrong keywords, which makes it virtually impossible to rank or get traffic from Google. This video shows you exactly how to find the right keywords. All right, let's start simple. I'm just gonna paste a URL into ChatGPT and use this prompt. Using the URL provided, tell me which keywords I should be targeting for this page. I'm purposely being vague with ChatGPT because I wanna see how helpful it actually is going to be for small business owners who know nothing about SEO. All right, so it's giving us a ton of keywords and this is the first mistake a lot of business owners do. They go for multiple different keywords on the same page when in reality, every page should be targeting only one keyword. So we need to use this list to find a keyword that we want to rank for. And I know that this list of keywords may be daunting, but stick with me, I'm gonna show you exactly how to find the keywords that you should be using. One thing that I like is that they're actually categorizing the keywords for us. So we have core service keywords, and then we have research and clinical trial keywords because they mention that on the website. And then they have local SEO keywords and even action-oriented keywords. And to top it all off, they're actually giving us some SEO implementation tips. So what we really wanna see is if these core service keywords are actually any good. So I copied those into SEMrush and here are the results. The top keyword that it gave us was Family Doctor Niagara Falls, which has a search volume of 210, meaning 210 people are searching that on average per month, but it has a keyword difficulty of 30, meaning that there's some competition for this keyword and it makes sense because it has the most volume. And as for the rest of the keywords, they have zero search volume. But the good news is that most of them are easy to rank for. Now, even though most of these keywords have no volume, that doesn't mean you can't go after them. In fact, you might actually rank really easily because nobody else is going after these keywords. This is a strategy that we call no volume SEO, and it can be very effective. But for the sake of this video, let's say we wanna rank for Family Doctor Niagara Falls. We're gonna click on that keyword, and we're gonna look for variations of that keyword that are a little bit easier to rank for because we don't wanna compete with everybody else and we don't have that kind of time. So in SEMrush, I'm gonna come down to keyword ideas and then I'm gonna click view all 32 keywords. And we're gonna look for a keyword variation that's a little bit easier to write for and that's the one we're gonna to wanna to go for. This keyword right here looks really good, Family Doctors in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It has a search volume of 70 and it's a lot easier to rank for. And I know this keyword looks almost identical to the first one here, but the word Ontario is added to the end. This is because there's a Niagara Falls in Ontario and there's a Niagara Falls in New York. So people wanna be a little bit more specific with their searches, which is what we want. And you could continue doing the same process to find even variations of that variation. In this case, there's not really many options, so this is the keyword that I would go with. And if we go back to ChatGPT, that's not even one of the keywords that it's giving us. Honestly, ChatGPT got a lot of things right. And although it doesn't have the keyword data, I would consider this a great starting point for keyword research. I'm not really sure how it knows how to grab the right keywords, but I'm here for it. The only caveat I would say is that if you have access to a keyword research tool, run the keywords through so you know which ones you should be targeting first. You don't wanna go for the most popular keyword in most cases because it's the most competitive and you probably won't rank or get traffic to your website. The keywords you wanna go after have lower search volume and a lower difficulty. All right, so here's how to make a ranking roadmap. We'll use this keyword for example, Family Doctors in Niagara Falls, Ontario. So you have two options. You can either copy this and paste it into Google and open up the top three links. Or in your keyword research tool, you can scroll down to SERP analysis and open up those top three links. 
These ones will be a little bit more impartial because it's not using your browser data. The first thing I'm going to look at is the amount of referring domains the top three links have. The first one has 63, 122, and then zero links. So we could potentially rank number three without getting any backlinks. And one thing to keep in mind, these first two links might not actually be what the person's looking for. These sites are both directories that help somebody find a family doctor. The first thing that I would do is contact both these directories and say, hey, I want to be listed in your directory. That could potentially get me business and potentially a backlink to my website from the top ranking sites for that keyword. I want to take a look at how many times you're using that keyword on the page. All I'm doing is command F and then pasting in the keyword here. And it looks like they're not even using that exact keyword on their page even once. Let's try a more broad keyword like family doctor. They're only using it three times on the page. So I'm going to use the detailed SEO extension, which you can just grab from detailed.com slash extension. And I'm going to take a look to see how many times they're using that keyword in their title tags and meta description and their heading tags. So family doctor, they're using it once. They have the other part of the keyword Niagara, Ontario there. And then they also have it in French. Now, one thing about multi-language is you want to have a whole separate version of your website that is in that other language. That's actually a really sneaky hack that we'll cover in another video that you can use to rank for the keywords twice. So they don't even have a meta description. The keyword not in there and their heading tags look like they're a little bit of a mess they have two heading one tags which you should only have one because that's what tells search engines what that page is about so by having two heading one tags they're confusing search engines so these guys are saying family doctor or nurse practitioner they're not mentioning where they're actually based in the heading one tag then the heading two tag that they have is land acknowledgement which is important but it should not be a heading two tag the heading two tag should support what the heading one tag says so if this heading two tag says land acknowledgement how is that supporting family doctor or nurse practitioner it's not. And the last thing I'm going to look at is the word count on this page, which is 963, which this page actually doesn't have that many words. Most of the word count is coming from these tweets down here. So by looking at these top three sites, we can tell that the first two we're probably not going to outrank, but we can probably get links from them and listed in their directories. And the third link we could easily beat out if we just use the keyword a couple times on the page. I would maybe have 500 words on this page. I would use the keyword in the title tag, the meta description the heading one tag, maybe in a heading two tag, you probably don't even need to do that, and in the content. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. I'm here to help. Bye.